Okay, today I've got a couple of announcements, a couple of things just to go over so you have a perspective. Then I have responses from Bonnie Satchitello to your questions. I'll introduce that in a few minutes, but first just want to give you a perspective of what we're looking for. You have an assignment due on Sunday, and that, if you haven't gotten it in, a number of you have gotten it in already, that's uh, for the worksheets 1.5, 2.1, and 2.2. So I'll be looking for those. I was able to get the worksheets 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3 in Word format, so that's uploaded, but I was not able to get you feedback. At this point, it will be Tuesday next week before I can get to it. But I will try. You've got plenty to work on between now and then anyway. And hopefully, also, I've given broad feedback so you, and you're getting to know your agency better, so there are some things that you know that you want to improve on. So. Uh, I'm assuming you can go ahead and work on that. If there's any specific question you have, let me know. All right. I also want to give you an overview of where we're going. And this is actually what I just pulled from the Northern webpage. So if you go to the Northern homepage and then type in the search box and type in IRB, uh, that's for the Institutional Review Board you will get second item down application for what we're doing in this class for your project and also with our project with uh, Bonnie Satchitello Sawyer. We need to complete a form. Essentially, it will show that we're exempt, but anytime we work with human subjects, anytime we do any kind of research, and it's not just at Northern, it's everywhere and it's with every nonprofit, uh, some of them that uh, don't do a lot of research, they might not be aware of it, but legally you have to complete this form. Legally they have to have a principal investigator, not a principal investigator, you'll be the principal investigator, but an oversight board to make sure that we don't do anything to put vulnerable populations at risk. And already in our discussions we know that you're, you have a key informant who is not probably considered a representative of a, of a vulnerable population. Also, because those agencies know the legal, um, the, the laws, they're not going to allow you to, and I, neither would I, to uh, be in touch and ask questions and, and do things that would harm anybody. But this is what we're going to fill out once you know what your project is. and. Uh, there, we are going through a change at Northern, so our person who provides the oversight, the person who has done it for years, is giving it over to another person. That person's still figuring things out. But at least historically, you know what you're going to do. Uh, the oversight person who is part of a board, he will share it with the board too, but knows enough so that he'll be able to look through your proposal and say, that's right, there's nothing here that would be of in danger. But I just want to give you a sense of the kind of questions they ask. Notice they say, principal investigator, that's going to be you, but I'm going to, and I'm, I think, I'd have to double check, I'm going to be the person under M, uh, MSUN sponsor. So I, w I'm a, uh, I am accountable, you will be accountable for what you do. The title of your project, the purpose of your project. That's part of what you're going to be proposing to me. And we'll work through that before I have you fill out this form. Probably, you know, within about a week, you're going to be filling out this form. You know, and essentially, you're going to be asking for an exemption. And here are the questions they ask. Do you re does your research involve pregnant women, fetuses, or prisoners? I don't think so. Or does it involve using survey and in interview procedures with children. I haven't perceived that from any of you. Uh, does it, and it doesn't mean you can't do it, then they're just going to look more closely if it does. Does your research involve the observation of children in settings where the investigators, that's you, will participate in activities with the children? None of you have indicated that. Uh, if the data is going to be recorded, I haven't perceived that, but uh, is there potential harm? And also, if you're going to record anybody, they need to know that you're recording them. 
Okay. Are the subjects going to be identified by name through demographic data? That's something for you that I will be asking you. You probably will not be identifying subjects by name except to uh, be able to quote, um, say the person's position because you're working with very small agencies. Yes, people will be able to uh, be identified. Oh, by the way, with those of you who are working with teams, yes, you are working with children. And yes, you may have to get permissions to work with your school system to get that worked out. Um, and, at the, and then also all of your questions will need to be vetted, will need to be approved ahead of time. But that shouldn't take long uh, historically when it's going to be the kind of thing we're doing. Essentially, the approvals will take place. Uh, your school system will need to approve it before Northern will approve it. So, uh, but as I said, just plan out your questions ahead of time and, uh, and just get the people who are uh, your principal, your superintendent to approve it and you're, and you're fine. Is it going to include sensitive data, uh, such as illegal activities, people talking about being involved in illegal activities, sexual orientation, sexual behavior, that kind of things that would be um, considered painful, embarrassing, and uh, possibly, uh, possibly da uh, damaging, emotionally damaging, or maybe even mentally damaging. No, you're not going to be doing any of that. Uh, if the data, document, records, or specimens are originally labeled in such a ma manner that the subjects can be identified, how are you going to remove them so that subjects are not identified? So that needs to be addressed in your application. If you have any of that, for the most part, most of you are going to be saying no. And if you do, then you will then be asked to uh, document, plan a little bit more completely and document how you will not be harming any of your subjects. So what's going to be needed is this application that we have a copy of, a summary of what you're proposing. If it's applicable informed consent, that would go with the team members and their parents, and they may already have something, but if not, if they have informed consent from their parents, uh, that's, I know that's a hassle, but that's something that you'll have to do is just let everybody know this is what you're doing, these are the questions you, you're going to be asking, and that the parent guardian and the school system say that's fine. Uh, so uh, the copies of the survey questionnaire and interview instruments, I will talk to uh, the people involved because some of you don't have your interview instruments fully prepared yet. And uh, that's something they're used to. You're in a learning mode. And uh, Northern is accustomed to working with students who are uh, adjusting as they go, as they learn. Okay. So that's what you're going to be needing to put forward and know that no matter what you do in your professional career, you need to be looking for the oversight committee to see that. Even with Hopa Mountain, we're going to have those approvals. And the HOPA needs to be answerable for that, too. What Bonnie has told me is because you as the students are carrying out the survey, she can just rely on the fact that you're getting, we're getting our permissions here, and they will be good for her oversight. So um, any questions about that? It's just one of those things that can be a hassle at times, especially if people don't get back to us quickly, but it is very important for the well-being of everyone involved and the legal well-being, too. All right. All right. So a week ago, you asked questions, and the people online over the last up through Tuesday asked, actually engaged in a very good discussion about what they were perceiving. And 
in preparing today, I focused on the answers to your questions because that is what Bonnie did. She will have more of a reaction. What I haven't done is um, done anything to make the discussion available to you, but I did not keep those, I did not limit that discussion to the students in the class. You have access to look at the, that discussion, and I encourage you to do so. It was excellent discussion, by the way, guys, and I, um, and I think uh, it gave perceptions to Bonnie that help her more than the simple questions. We asked simple, straightforward questions in a way that we could not follow up. So you're going to find here in, answer, in looking at the answers that you're getting some answers that are intended to try to give you some insight at a time. As I said, Bonnie's in Seattle. She's attending a conference. I received her answers in the middle of the night. So you can well imagine the time that she was taking that she didn't have. So, but this is, this is not, it's not unusual to ask questions and then to be misunderstood or to get vague answers. So I want you to get used to that too. And as you, we look at the answers, consider follow-up questions you may want to ask to get a little bit more clarity on the answers that are here. So, I am looking at the, um, we're making reference to folks online, we are making reference to the PowerPoint presentation for today, which has already been uploaded. Uh, under, uh, under, I think the PowerPoint presentation is another, oh, I have uh, created a special uh, module under content for Hope a Mountain, and I have uploaded it to that. Also uploaded to that, and you're going to see in her answer, is references to uh, a document which I have copied and I'm, I am handing out to you guys, and the rest of you can upload it and again find it under the uh, Hopa Mountain documents. Okay. This is not dated, and it looks like uh, Bonnie edited it to, because if I remember seeing this document before, it was very, very long. I've made the, uh, the margins smaller so they can fit it on the front and back of the page just because you get too much and you get more overwhelmed the more pages there are. But she, at some points, in two of her answers, she makes reference to this, to this document, which she calls for charting our impact document. It was prepared about a year ago. She didn't, this is not dated, but I think what she did was in removing the unnecessary information, the date was removed. So, uh, well, if you have questions as we go through, take notes because I want you to be able to ask her those questions when she uh, talks to us next week. So, a week from today, we're looking for an audio call where she's going to be talking to you guys. This particular classroom is not set up for, uh, for taping her, for the viewing. That's 314 down the hall and there's another class in there right now. And I'm not going to try to make a case in a week's time to move that class out so we can move in so we can see her. Instead, we're going to rely on the, um, the audio. By the way, um, Sometime in October, it might happen, uh, Bonnie is talking to the folks at HRDC about coming and uh, doing a presentation for them. If she's on in Haver, I want to arrange a time when you can meet her and talk with her, and if it can be class time, that's what I will do. If not, uh, it will become optional, but I want to give you an opportunity even if she's not available during class time. Okay. So the first question you asked is, how do you measure success? Well, that is sort of, you know, I took your question and sometimes sort of reworded it for, for clarity, but uh, in how you measure success can be interpreted a lot of ways. But she said, please see our charting our impact statements. So that's sitting right in front of you. Attached for an overview of how we measure success. Every one of Hopeless Mountain's initiatives have a different measure of success. And so, if you look over this, and it's a tight two pages on here, uh, they, you'll see that there are some, there is some data, but the purpose of this charting are 
impact is not meant to be as much a data report as to give an overview, but you see that they are including a little bit more information on each initiative is measured in a different way and also as you look through there is an analysis overview as far as what HOPA does. As you look through it, and I'm not trying, going to try to go through every step of it because it's not explicit, but look, look through that and see if you have more explicit questions for Bonnie. So how do you ch uh, measure success? Well, they measure it, they do gather data, but as you see her answers, they also measure relationship. And so that is starting, going to start to come through too. In the discussions, um, those of you online, what I noticed is there, was, there were questions. Who are you really? How do you reach out? What is your breadth? Uh, how do you figure out who you're reaching? And uh, those kinds of questions can continue to be asked. One of you responded, well, I'm aware of HOPA because my child came home with a book from the what is that program, the, the um, Storymakers program? I have a Storymakers book myself. And w another person online said, I know it because I know the Strengthening the Circle. I've participated in that. I also participated in. And, uh, and then uh, Marlene, you s mentioned other <coughs> programs that are no longer, that's actually have cycled through and cycled out. Some of these programs, and Bonnie sort of references it, that some have a need for now, but as you go through, they change, they adjust, and sometimes they run their course. And so, as I said, there was an awesome program geared for teens that was between Haver and Rocky Boy, and they did some amazing things, but it cycled through, and when it came time, for the end of measuring the end of their initiative, they took measure and said, it's run its course, it's time to move on. So, how do you measure success? Again, any thoughts, response? Surveys. Yeah. Uh, surveys that are done before, so the measure kind of their baseline. Yeah, did you see that she mentioned that? Pre yeah, and post surveys. they do pre and post surveys. They do more than my impression is they do more than what they tell us sometimes. And uh, so part of what we're doing is we're not seeing it. We keep asking the question. We be respectful. She is doing so much for us by opening her agency for us to take a, a, a magnifying glass to actually. How many people feel comfortable with that happening to them? And she has welcomed it. So with respect, but we keep asking questions and trying to clarify our questions until we get the answers we want. Without seeming to badger, of course. But you can say, I'm still trying to struggle. Okay, what kind of, if, you, if you're wanting to know more about the pre-post surveys. Okay. How do you balance goals with the need to refine and, and what you do as you grow? And? Her response, all of our initiatives are generational by design. Do you know what she means by generational? It means they're not, um, they're not fixed. That's they're, right. They can be flexible, they can be tailored to a certain... Uh, they're not program. fixed, they can be tailored to certain needs, they can also be tailored to certain time orientations. Be time limited. Well, and it, Actually, not necessarily time limited because that would fix it at an, an, as an end time, but possible um, so that they can evolve. Okay. We are constantly making iterative changes. Where's that word again? Okay, and what does it mean? Anybody have a smartphone to look it up? What's an iteration? 
where somebody else could go into the document and make those changes, so it's not... Okay. It's not controlled by one source, so others can, can edit it. Oh, okay. Process. Say that again. Repeating a process. Repeating a process, is that what it says? Yeah, it says it's the act of repeating a process, either to generate an unbounded sequence of outcomes or with the aim to okay. the aim of approaching its desired goal, target, or result. Okay, and how does that fit with it within the context of how she's used it? So it's not necessarily repetition, but it, you're re-looking at tweaking and things tweaking so things. things. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. So that it's not necessarily repeated yeah. exactly as it was before as you go through cycles. It's adjusted as you go. Okay, funders also play a significant role in shaping our goals. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. As we are reliant on foundation support for most of our work. They rely on foundation re support for most of their work and historically they have been fortunate to also have some federal foundation goals, particularly na uh, the National Science Foundation has been supportive in the past. Okay. Any comments about this response? Okay. That's a little bit big. Yeah, no. one o'clock in the morning, yes. being asked a general question, yes. away from most of your resources. Right. Uh, I think she's doing pretty well considering, sure. you know, if I hadn't told you all those things, I could well imagine you go, uh, yeah, bit, yeah, but. yeah. But this can also foster further questions. Okay, if you want specifics, also make sure you give her time and space to dig out and give her the, you know, and we need to give her the option to say, that's going to be hard to dig that out. It's going to take more time. Do you really want me to take that time? Because her time with us, she's going to be generous with it, but we can't expect her to give unfettered she time. She, yes, yeah, she does. She does. Like this question right here, I would say, how yeah. will it benefit? Perspective. That's right. Your question was, how will benefit, HOPA benefit from the programs they offer? She interpreted it one way. I interpreted it a different way. I don't know how you interpreted it, but our question was vague enough to allow for different interpretations. And what uh, Bonnie said is HOPA amount of benefits every day as we work with inspiring people and projects in rural and tri tribal communities. What does that tell you about Bonnie? That success is how others achieve it, not, not so much how I take it as, um, yeah. you say how does hope of benefit, I take it as the people that they interact with in, in each community inspire them. They, you know, they yes. benefit from their other people's success. That's so how I take that. that's what she's saying. Now you may have wondered, okay, how does it fund HOPA? How, how, what are the details as far as uh, fiscal concerns? What, is, what does it do to um, improve HOPA as an entity? And as you dig, I think you're gonna find that one of the concerns that may come out of that is people don't know about HOPA because HOPA is not interested in promoting itself. The fact that it's not interested in promoting itself is a good thing, but it has ramifications. It can be a good thing, but it has ramifications. And what she is saying, and, and as I'm, notice I am freely sort of adding a few things, but when I met with Hopa, was it two weeks ago now? She's it was so, doesn't seem like two weeks ago now. One of the things that I heard in a conversation was, Relationship is everything. And I think this answer reflects that. I'm doing this because it means a lot to, this is what I'm hearing, I'm interpreting. I'm hearing Bonnie say, I'm doing this because it gives meaning to my life, it gives me energy, my reward is not a tangible reward, it's a life quality reward. Yeah, she's not worried about how the organization's gonna as much as how the people that they service is going to benefit. Yeah. 
This is an organization that sees itself as a conduit to help groups, people's communities become what they dream of becoming. Okay. At this point in time, what are the top three priorities for HOPA? Her first broad answer, and she pulled this from their strategic plan, their five-year goal to realize the HOPA way. Remember her website? She talked about what the HOPA way was. If you have questions about what it means, uh, hopefully the article on Highlander and HOPA helped with that, but if you have questions for clarification, I want you to go ahead and uh, find a way to verbalize that. But by being one, a model organization with a diverse and self-managed board of directors. Two, a diverse and stable funding base. Three, mature programs. Four, central administration. And five, a highly functioning staff. And this comes from her document. And it, I, in her answer, and she cut and pasted it from a document. So notice that she's taken every one of those and has subpoints under them for capacity building. So seeking a national board involved in fundraising, and that may change because that was part of our discussion. Do we want to stay a national board? Do we want to have the balance of the uh, national outreach? Yes, a little bit, but also having people who know the region and area and know the populations is also important. Strong and ethical administration. How do you measure that? Diverse and stable fund development. That's a little bit easier to measure. Programs that emerge from communities we serve. Has she explained how those programs emerge from communities you serve? I would encourage maybe thinking of a question where you can see that process of how those programs emerge. Maybe get some stories of how their existing programs emerged. Staff and board that live the hope away in their working in their community. That's a big thing that they're really looking for as they expand. Okay. And another goal to achieve a diverse, stable funding base, Hope of Mountain will cultivate honor and honor long-term relationships with individuals, donors, foundations, and other funding pro uh, partners. You do have a question later on about how, you keep, how she keeps in touch with them. And she's given as good an answer as you might at, uh, at 1 o'clock in the morning, but you might ask for a little bit more, uh, maybe some examples. Um, to realize operational consistency and excellent services in rural and tribal citizen leaders, Hopa Mountain will increase administrative support to create strong central operational core. What does she mean by that? They will grow to support people to the, whatever level is needed. Okay. So attention to the administrative core of the project, which could be from within the community itself, although some of the programs are more centralized than that. The uh, Storytellers program is more centralized. Uh, so, but as Ask for examples and keep that focus responsive on a daily basis. So they are committed to being responsive. You don't have to wait three, five days a week to get some response. You probably have to wait longer to hear from me when you email me than you would have to wait to hear from Bonnie. And I try to not make you wait too long. Okay. All right. To strengthen and deepen high-caliber programs, Hope Mountain will move from launching into stabilizing programs. They've been launching a lot of programs. Now the focus is on stabilizing some of those programs. And develop systems, manuals, and build staff, build for staff turnover, sort of the uh, longevity and uh, plan so that if 
key people, things happen to some of the key people that they're able to sustain the program is not individually dependent. And that's not only for the programs, but it's for HOPA itself. Okay, based on this, any other questions you have? Go ahead. Notice that I'm encouraged you to write the questions and get prepared for next week. And when you walk out of here today, you might be thinking, oh, I'll, keep, I'll remember this, but my experience is you probably won't remember this, so I hope you're taking notes as you go too. How can you decide what you can do and what you can't do? The sources for those decisions come from the strategic plan. You just saw pieces of this strategic plan and also what, uh, whether or not they can do something really depends on whether or not they have funding, right? Okay, do you have any further questions to ask for more clarification from this very brief answer? Okay, I hope those of you listening to the tape, those of you who are online, are writing down questions as well. Okay, what is your capacity helping for helping different organizations and how, that is essentially, how many communities can you work with at one time? And I was expecting one kind of answer. We got another kind of answer from what I expected. I don't know if it's what you were looking for. She said, we focus our work in high poverty, rural and tribal communities. So I'm interpreting what she says. Now I'm interpreting it. You might interpret it differently. But what she's saying is, I'm not going to tell you how many communities we can work with. I'm just saying where we're going to focus. Yes, we're trying to do, we have this umbrella of things we can do, but we're focusing on what communities we can, we can work with and impact the best. Okay. So most of that is they've already identified these communities, so they're past the startup. Now they're in the maintaining of these programs. As well. Some of the programs they have, now notice that it's, there's already been reference to several of the programs that they have had that have cycled out. And they have cycled out, yes, perhaps the funding dried up, but they also made the decision that they'd run their course. Very, very proud of the, some of the achievements of course, uh, pro, uh, projects they have that have run their course. But they also have projects, and the Strengthening the Circle is one of them, where they had amazing funding from the National Science Foundation. And that's dried up or is drying up. The decision of whether or not to continue it partially depends on funding. But the focus of maintaining it has to do with the success and the continued perceived need for the project from among, from the communities that they're serving. You know, the communities are helping make those, are essentially driving those decisions. So there's a, an intense desire to maintain the Strengthening the Circle. Um, just another piece of information, Strengthening the Circle was, I think, one of the projects where they reached out beyond state borders. It wasn't just in Montana, and they had an excellent, excellent uh, portion of their initiative that was in South Dakota that was initiated and driven by South Dakota. And that entity in South Dakota has since spawned, it's, on, it's broken away and established its own base and seeking its own funding, which is actually a sign of success. And yet, when they do so, it also means when you let go of something, if you want it to, uh, if you want it to have longevity, you don't just let go. You're there to provide support and to uh, first to help with the the funding transition, but also the advising transition, which costs money, by the way if you're going to invest time and follow up and traveling and supervising, that kind of stuff. So it's actually costs HOPA to maintain this uh, contact and to be focused on helping that transition. How do you do that? And that's part of the question. So they're focusing on high poverty and tribal communities. 
They're focusing on maintaining and providing stability for the initiatives that still are perceived as being timely. And of course, they also have to look at funding sources and what they can do. Yes? You mentioned there was seven principal programs that they have. Yes. I got off the website that there were nine. OK. And Does that mean that some of these are no longer? I would go back to the website, and I would go back to this list here, and I would compare them. Yeah. And as you know, and I think Bonnie wants to talk to you next week before she actually, actually launches the next website, because she's indicating that our feedback may cause her to tweak something that she's planning to launch. And she wants to get things, because it's easier to fix it before you launch the website, she wants to get it in, uh, in a refined state before she launches it. They're starting with a whole different platform than what they've been using. Okay. Kind of looks like maybe some of them have just kind of been melded together. From what I can see. It okay. Here. Okay. And I haven't done the comparison, so uh, it's possible uh, things have been combined. It's also co possible that at the time they did the website, prepared the website, uh, they kept some of what they were doing up partially because some of what they have allowed to move, uh, they've moved on from, some of it is amazing. And it really does a good job of reflecting some of the scope of what HOPA does. So that's possible as well. Next question is, what results have you achieved over the past year, over the last several years? If you go back to the document I handed out to you, charting our course, uh, they do, you know, she does list the seven programs, and in that, at least reflect some of what they see as their accomplishments. And then also, if you look further, progress will ultimately be realized through our efforts in support of citizen leaders, I'm trying to, okay, yes, to construct new opportunities for youth and rural communities. So this is how they, broadly, how they are planning to uh, achieve that. Also, so that was part of the, that was under the question, how will you know if you are making progress? And then also under what have, have and haven't you accomplished so far, those last two paragraphs, the report says, Hopa Mountain has made significant progress with our short-term goals, and she lists what they are. Staff have also been able to increase the number of resources that are available to native nonprofits in our region and increase these leaders' access to regional networks, including funding resources. Those are accomplishments. What they haven't realized are some of the longer-term goals of improving access to quality com uh, informal community education, increasing economic resources, decrease high poverty rates, uh, improving health and well-being. They're saying those are big, big goals. Yeah. And we're, st you know, I know they haven't been realized, but we're not letting go of them either. So again, you may find as you look at this that you have questions to ask for, to get more detail, to get some examples, to get some more clarification too. So jot those down. I'm leaving it up to you to ask those questions. How do you communicate? I think this is the last question. How do you communicate with your external stakeholders, especially collaborators? And she lists what they do. And again, some of which, well, I'm not sure. You've, you've seen copies, pieces of reports. Uh, newsletters can be accessed by their website, by the way. So if you haven't 
clicked on those areas, you can look at their newsletters. Letters, um, you might ask what she means by that. I just received a letter yesterday. And anytime anybody does anything, they get a letter. So I'm being thanked for what I've done in the last couple of weeks. And then also social media. I am not on Facebook, but you can access them on f Facebook. And let me know if it was helpful. I really need to make sure I have access to those things. But, um, but I have not yet made the full plunge. I can relate. I can relate. It's it's letting go of a sense of privacy that is just a little bit more than I feel comfortable doing. And for those of you who have been on social media your whole lives, it may, may not feel the same way to you, but yeah. And that's the other thing. There's so much you have to wade through to get what you want, especially when you're still learning how to use the website. That. Um, I will probably take care of all of that once I get once I'm retired and have a little bit more time and then that's too late to help you guys. So, those are the ways. Questions? I think that's yep, I thought that was all. Next steps, what should we do next? Poker Mountain stuff? Mhm. Mm well, I think we need to refine our questions and, and try to determine um, what, if, if anything, we can help them with to establish, to okay. perpetuate their goals. So I ask each of you to have questions and refine it. I don't want to come in and have all of you look at me blankly on Wednesday when I ask what questions you have. I'll be looking for, having looked at this and at the documents, what are some of the questions that you still have that will help get more specific answers? and help you as we consider, remember our goal is to then talk with Bonnie and mutually come up with some ideas for a project we can help her with and also to make sure you have the information, the foundational information you need to uh, accurately reflect HOPA, HOPA's goals and its initiatives as you to step forward. So I will be looking for that on Wednesday. For those of you online, uh, do send me any questions you have. Actually, I will open up a discussion box just as I did before. Sometimes I think after the fact. I'm sorry I didn't open up that box earlier, but that box will remain open up through Tuesday night for those of you online. Oh, you guys in class, if you want to participate, jump in. And. Um, and then on Wednesday, we will discuss it briefly, but on, we will also be next week, be continuing on our look at preparing for interviews. And then we'll go into studying using surveys. And we'll do all of that before we move out of chapter two and into chapter three. So uh, the amount of, of uh, additional written assignments will be limited as you hone, as you refine what you've already been working on and as you start working on proposing your project. That will keep you plenty busy enough. And then in a couple of weeks we'll move on to looking at uh, the mission vision values which is chapter three. Okay, jumping in. Any last questions for today? Okay, uh, be looking for those worksheets. I'm going to do them Sunday. Okay, I will be looking for them on I Sunday. Quit working on Sundays. Okay, good. Best to you. I don't have any time. Uh huh. Okay. Oh, I can get have it. a great weekend. Yeah, I'll see you on Monday. <laughs>